Previously on 7 in 7, the boys went in search of giant snow sculptures and got to grips with a local tipple in Ishkul. Following our evening of schnapps tasting, we arrived in Obergurgel late in the evening. So late in fact, that we missed our dinner at the hotel Edelweiss and Gurgel. But this didn't dampen Rob's spirits. These lads. Still got the ski gear on. <laughs> yep, she heard it. Despite a late night, we were up early to meet with local guide and historian Albert Dreischenbrugger to learn about how August Picard's balloon landing put Obergurgel on the world map. Well, yeah, uh, actually in 1931, Mr. Oshus Picard, he and his company on engineer uh, Paul Kipfer, they were called, they were uh, trying uh, actually not uh, to reach the, the, the altitude, the maximum altitude, they actually they were scientists and physicists, so they wanted actually to, to study about the cosmic rays. And so they did, they did this balloon uh, a flight. They started off from, from Germany, Augsburg in Germany. There was a, the first pressurized cabin in the world. Oh, so it was pressurized, oh, wow. it wasn't open cabin. Oh, it no, must be if you no. go to the stratosphere, exactly, right? Yeah. Exactly, And so that's why actually for those days it was like, it was later the moon landing, it was for those days because uh, people did not think that you can go higher than 5,000 meters. And so mm. the car uh, and, and Kipfer, they were actually the first, they, they went up into the stratosphere and also the first people in the world, they could see like, you said the, the, the curvature, curvature, the curvature yeah. of, of the Earth. Wow. Yeah. So how high and, was that? Well, they uh, uh, went up uh, about 15,800 meters, yeah, which okay. is more than 50,000 feet. Wow. Huh? Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The whole thing should only take about six, seven hours, uh, go up and then come down at 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. But then, you know, they, they got stuck up there and, and they had to wait actually till the sun uh, sets so that it cools down the atmosphere right. and, and that the balloon was sinking then. Yeah. Luckily then, uh, about uh, nine o'clock in the evening, they were landing then just here where you see the shape coming out behind the little device. Yeah. yeah. There is a glass there at the bottom. Okay, so they landed there. Did anyone know they were landing there? Because well, I'm assuming no. this didn't look like it did now with all the hotels. Actually, but. they lost a little bit orientation in the air as well. Yeah, they were so high up. So even they, they did not know where they are. Right. right. But uh, people, you know, here the church, yeah. uh, they went home from the church yeah. and they saw the balloon going in. Yeah. But the farmers from those days, they were not sure what it is. So they told the, the uh, school teacher of that time, Hans Falkner, who is over there. And he knew from the newspaper, he knew that, that Picard was trying to do this, you know, yeah. stratosphere flight. And so then they, next day, they, they started. So they stood up, they were up there for a whole evening on their Yeah, they, they stayed overnight on, on, on the glacier. Okay, so they hike up there, they find them and then... Next morning, they went up and, and find them. They were, of course, they were very tired and they also but you know they were they were okay and nice. Yeah, so yeah. it had a happy ending. It was a happy ending, yeah, and it was the best, of course, what could happen for Obergogli. It was lucky for Picard and, and Kipa, but it was lucky for Obergogli because all the journalists, nearly from yeah. all over Europe, then they came here and and it was you know the start of the real tourism in Obergogli. Yeah. Oh really? Because so, before no one really knew Obergogli or not so many. Picard would later shift his attention to designing a capsule that would take a human safely down to over 4,000 meters below sea level. He was one of the finest inventors of the 20th century and left a huge legacy. Auguste was even the inspiration for Professor Calculus in the Tintin books and Jean-Luc Picard, the captain of the Starship Enterprise. Keen for a ski, we met with ski club leaders Peter Lewis and Brian Wingrove, who were leading a Fresh Tracks holiday group and offered to show us around. How long have you been coming here? Uh, this is my third trip here. I came here in 2003, I think it was, and again in 2007, both times for the ski club leading off-piste holidays. So this is a, a piece one for me, which is makes a nice change. Okay. The resort's obviously got a lot of lot of terrain, and, and is there off-piste terrain, on-piste terrain, good for you know intermediates? And... It's uh, I would say piece-wise, it's a good strong intermediate resort. It's not huge, even with um, hot gurgle inclusive. It's not like a Grand Massif or Three Valleys, but it keeps its snow well. It's high. Yeah. Because it's high, it's, it's good. Yeah. And what do you think is the kind of the draw to, to the British skiers? I think it's the quiet piece, the you know, short lift queues, or um, probably the quality. The quality. The quality of the accommodation, food, 
and the pieces. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and the apres. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the apres. Yeah. Cool. And on a day like today, what part of the sport would you head to for good snow? I always try and follow the sun. Because we're early in the year, January, obviously it's early in the year, once the sun gets on the slopes and softens it slightly, better for the, better for the uh, members. Yeah. Yeah, keeping the sunshine. Yeah. But, so today we start at the Overgill then, work our way across the hot curve as the sun. You know, softens the slopes yeah. a little bit. And on a powder day, which, which way would you head? Overgill, straight off the top, down the back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not giving away too much. <laughs> <laughs> keep your secret. Well, you've got to keep some secrets. You have secrets. to come here to find out. Well, you have to come here to find out and you have to join the ski club to find out, don't you? <laughs> so, yeah, we don't give too much away. Yeah. <laughs> After a fun couple of hours of following Peter and enjoying some great peace conditions, we went for some high octane fun. Ibergurgle is a fantastic resort for intermediate and advanced skiers. Although there are fewer greener blue runs offered than Ishgul, the runs that are on offer are steeper, quieter and wider. The snow is also kept in great condition by the aspect and altitude, which means you can pick up some serious speed. All that high octane fun had made us hungry, so we stopped at a locally renowned restaurant, the Home at Arm, to eat some traditional Austrian food. If you ever visit Obergurgel, then this place is well worth a visit. We chatted to Obergurgel native and restaurant owner Cecilia Praxma about what food to try. Also, we are here with uh, Basilius in the Hohe Mütalm uh, in uh, Obergurgel. And we are eating here very typical uh, Tyrolian food. Maybe you can explain a bit about this food and tell us what we have here. First, we have here the Käsespätzle. Spätzle. Es ist bei uns alles selber gemacht. Wir kaufen ausschließlich von regionalen Produzenten direkt aus der Umgebung. Und die, die Gerichte, was wir hier haben, sind die 100 Jahre alt oder, oder wie lange ist der Herkunft hier? Von der also ich, ich bin jetzt 40 und äh, diese Gerichte kennt mein Uropa schon, also dürft, dürft sicher an die 100 Jahre alt sein, ja sowieso. Wunderbar. Und das Restaurant hier, also wir sehen äh, mit ein bisschen Filmen danach, ist da wunderschön, ja. Wie lange gab es ein bisschen Herkunft über das Ganze? Also, die alte Hohe Muthütte wurde 1953 erbaut. Da ist ein Einsersesslift heraufgegangen. Da hat man bei jeder Stütze musste man sich so ein bisschen ducken, weil das ist ja war ein bisschen war ein alter Lift. Und die neue Hütte wurde 2007, 2008, im Winter ist sie das erste Mal in Betrieb genommen, also 2007 gebaut, mit der Kabinenbahn alles neu gebaut, 2007, 2008. Ich bringe euch jetzt noch einen Schnaps zum Probieren, den haben wir selber gemacht, zum oh. Unterspülen dann. Ja. Im, Sim, Im Sommer, äh, da unten ist der Zirnwald, das ist einer der größten Zirnwälder in, in Europa, denke ich mal. Und äh, wir machen immer einen hausgemachten Zirnschnaps und da bringe ich euch dann auch was zum Probieren. Schon wieder, wir haben gestern Abend auch Edelschnaps probiert. Ja, sehr gut, aber Kostung. Also es geht weiter. <lacht> Jawohl, ja, genau so ist es. Super, prima. Two words could sum up our lunch, delicious and substantial. The latter meaning that we were forced to retire early, which was a good decision as the weather changed very rapidly. After a quick dance off to Scatman John, which I won, we threw our gear in the car and drove 30 minutes down the road to Langenfeld to check out the Aquadome. The Aquadome is a four star superior hotel with huge spa, wellness area and thermal pool complex. You have to see this place to believe it, it's unreal. The Aquadome is a four star hotel, four star superior hotel and also a thermal spa. So it's open for daily guests as well. So if they wanna, they can buy a three hours ticket or a daily ticket, whatever they want. We have 13 different pools with a temperature between 26 and 36 degrees. So the coldest one is an active pool for proper swimmers and all the other pools are warmer water where you can really chill in there and play there. So it's not just uh, pools here, it's not just pools, we've seen some treatment bars and all that kind yes, of stuff as yeah, well. everything, yeah. So yeah. if you want to come for a weekend, you can just come here and relax and... Yeah, it take, will not take, get boring, definitely. It, really? <laughs> no. You've got a whole weekend's worth of entertainment yes. here? Okay. Yeah. The Aquadome came as welcome respite from our busy schedule. 
two hours relaxing in thermal pools caused our bodies to give in to the tiredness. So, in an effort to keep Phil awake at the wheel, the tunes were cranked up. Our hotel, the Hotel Grauer Bear, was in the heart of Innsbruck, so as you'd imagine, parking wasn't easy. If you stay at a hotel in the centre of Innsbruck, expect to pay 20 euros a day on parking. That's if you can find a space. <laughs> What's going on? In an underground car park at the biggest car in the world. There aren't any spaces. If Phil's ordeal of having to manoeuvre the world's longest hire car out of the hotel's underground car park wasn't enough, we then had to repack all of our gear to take it up to our hotel room. This was your idea. You were very keen for this idea. And you... At this point I was exhausted and close to breaking point which Phil was more than aware of. But that's the thing about banter. It doesn't just stop when you're tired and hungry. It's when you're at your lowest that you're the most vulnerable. Tom, do you think you're finished? Hey? Do you think you're finished? What? You still got to pack this camera away. Next episode, we're in Innsbruck.